Hey guys, Mars Singer here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so, do I have an interesting one for you guys today? So, we are going to be revisiting an old meme that some of you guys probably will be aware of, even if it happened long before your time. And that is the meme of To Be Released. Um, it's been around for quite a long time in the community as a meme. Um, Obviously, when it first happened, people were upset, or some people were upset, some people didn't care, some people didn't even really know, because back then, it was a lot more likely that if you played Global, you didn't even really know that the JP version existed, so potentially, you were just more confused than anything else. Um, so I am going to explain all the details. For those of you who don't actually know what this is even about, um, obviously, we're going to go through the history and all of the details and um, this is an opinion that I formed quite a long time ago. Uh, I've had discussions with people in like Five Nine on podcasts and stuff like that because I'm pretty sure a long time ago uh, Five Nine did a video about like the top global shafts and uh, or I think it was just Dokon shafts in general. And this was in the video. And even then, as like a member of Five Nine, like I disagreed with that being in the video because I don't think it was a shaft. So I'm going to go through the reasons why I think it wasn't. Um, I know some people think it was, like I had a bit of, uh, quite a bit of back and forth debate with a few people. This was tweeted like not long before I came home from work from a night shift and went to bed. So obviously by the time I woke up many hours later, there was lots of other replies and stuff. And rather than just go back and keep reposting the same replies over and over again, the fact that it seems to be a topic that people are still kind of interested in engaging in, or at least arguing about, because I guess that is what people love to do on the internet, I thought I might as well make a video about it. So one of the things I'm not going to show, I'm going to try and address some of the arguments that people made in the discussion, but unfortunately, with this being the internet, I can kind of see why some people just like to steer clear of the community but like not just for Dokkan but for anything because on Twitter and Reddit and stuff like that the number of people who apparently can't seemingly have a civil argument with somebody that they disagree with without it descending into like insults and all sorts of stuff so like I don't want to go through some of the reply threads on here because some people just for some reason find are incapable of not becoming completely unhinged when a stranger disagrees with them on the internet like I, I don't understand how even if you don't agree with this take like people dropping insults like people were uh, literally directly attacking me calling me like a you know an akatsuki simp like i'm boot licking dokon so hard i've gas lit myself into thinking that this wasn't a shaft it's like no dude like this is just genuinely my opinion and in my replies to people I have laid out what I think is a perfectly logical argument as to why I think that so to just dismiss it away and be like oh you're just like boot licking dope it's like yeah come on like come up with an actual good counter argument because this is one of those things that I feel very strongly about this take like I don't out of all the people that replied to me nobody provided what I would consider a convincing argument to change my mind and I'm going to go through that all with you guys right now. So, for those of you who don't know, just to start us off, uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Physical Omega Shenron released in August of 2017 on both versions of Dokkan at the same time. Now, I asked around with some of the people I know in the community, and, um, you know, I could guess I could have done way more detailed research, but I wanted to get on and just make the video, right? Now, as far as I'm aware, and Luca Dokkan told me that he's aware the same, um, this was the first time we ever had a big, like, Dokkan Fest exclusive, like, the new big units in the game, release on both versions of the game at the same time. So this was a pretty huge deal. I remember when the data downloads came out, and the fact that these guys were in the global files, like, people online were going insane, the fact that these guys were going to come out on global at the same time. And then, of course, it was discovered that on global, they were going to have no leader skill. So when you looked at them on the scouter in game and if you pulled them and actually brought them up in your box the leader skill rather than having fusion category 3 150 or tech 3 and 150 it just said to be released and that was it they had no leader skill if you put them as the leader for your team you got no leader skill bonus whatsoever um, you could actually run them as the leads they just yeah they didn't have a leader skill and so to this day um, people have considered this to be a global shaft, um, whereas I think it's a global W. 
um, as I said in here. Like I, I say, if people accepted this obvious truth, and a lot of people just replied saying why, um, and this is the main reason why, okay? So we got the units in game to use way before Global was ready for the category meta. They weren't going to have their leader skill, so the alternative was we just don't get them at the same time and have to wait six months like usual, so this is a Global W. So, because we've got to remember, nowadays, the schedules are a lot closer than they've ever been. Not only do we have lots of celebrations that are synced, but even when they're not, the gap has smallened now to becoming like two, three, four... Like, it's barely ever six months apart from the anniversary because that's tied to a specific date. Like, back in the day, Global used to very much be the exact same schedule as JP, but it was like five or six months, and that was it. There was like no wiggle room, and it was only as the years progressed that Global started to change things up uh, for, the, for better or worse, I guess, right? So, this is basically the main crux of my argument, right? Is Global made a choice back then that that like we were not ready for categories right now you have to remember i'm going to show the dates and everything here gogeta and omega came to global not long after the global anniversary of the second year the second year anniversary was the introduction of 120 leads with the scr super saiyan 4 goku and agl super saiyan 4 vegeta so the meta on global was now the 120 leaders um so imagine if they then dropped two units that have categories with 150 percent and then have the 50 percent like backup um like the meta was not ready for those and i've seen a lot of people argue and say oh you know power creep doesn't matter which to a certain extent i do agree with right like it's not like the game would have died if they'd given them their leader skills but there are a lot of factors that we can take into account we'll go over some of them right but the main point is regardless of why they made the decision they made the decision that if they were going to release Gogeta and Omega at the same time as JP, they couldn't have their leader skills. So all this really boils down to, and this is why I don't think this is very complicated and why I don't understand why people don't see this from my perspective. Because there were, you can argue that there were three options, right? Number one, we just get the units in full, same as JP with their leader skill. But... They decided that no, we're not doing that. So that is off the table. So that means there are two options left. And option one is we get the units at the same time as JP. You can use them on your teams in the game that they can be run on. Um, I think Gogeta was like, even on global without his leader skill, Gogeta was like the best unit in the game because he had a 70% chance to counter super attacks. Um, or the other option is, well, you just don't get them at the same time then. And you have to wait six months like you do usually with these kind of units, right? So that's where I don't understand why people think this is a shaft. If, the op if there are two options, you can have this thing now and have a bunch of fun using it. And then in a certain amount of time, we will add the leader skills when Global is ready. And then you have whole new teams to run with these units. Or B, no, no fun for you. You just don't get them and you have to sit and watch jp people post clips of like gogeta countering bosses super attacks and killing them with a crit counter like i just don't get that if i can't have all my fun right now then i want no fun at all perspective is how i see the opposition to this right because if we take a look like i say it was august 2017 um the teams that were available at the time for these guys to be run on we had the 70% uh, leaders, which is obviously uh, Tech was Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and Physical was uh, Legendary Super Saiyan Broly. Now, Broly and Omega didn't really link up very well, but being a fusion, um, Gotenks and Gogeta linked up very nicely. So Go Gogeta on this team worked out very, very well. But we'd also had, not long before the release of Gogeta and Omega, we had Physical Vegito Blue and AGL Rosé, who they themselves kind of ushered in this new meta, right? We'd been in the mono categories for so long, 70% leaders for one typing only, and then they dropped Vegito Blue and Rosé that had 50% leads for Super or Extreme. So back then, I remember I pulled Gogeta off of his original banner, and one of the best teams on Global was Physical Vegito Blue lead, and then Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, STR Gogeta, AGL Super Vegito, 
tech go tanks and then whoever else you wanted right you could run like a floating support unit or whatever and that was one of the best teams in the game and we wouldn't have got to do that if they hadn't released the unit right so i remember having so much fun with this uh super saiyan 4 gogeta and then as the time went on um you can see here so this is august 2017 literally uh at the end of august i think it was yep 29th of august 2017 physical cooler came out who was the 120 lead for extreme physical and uh cooler and um omega shenron actually linked up reasonably well like cooler and uh sorry omega shenron even without his leader skill was one of the best units that you could run on cooler's team um and he was super super good right and then if we go back a little bit more i think we only have to skip ahead i think it's uh it's not september i think it's october yeah, we skip ahead to October, and then here we have the release of Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, who is the 120 lead for Super Tech, and because it's a Super Saiyan 3 Goku, he has over in a flash, which means he links up really well with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. So, like, Global, as far as I was concerned, Global got a huge W by having these units in the game available to be used. Like, when Tech Angel Goku dropped, and then we were able to use this Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta on a double 120 lead. Again, he was looking like one of the best units in the game. So that's why I don't get this whole, like, it was a shaft, right? Like, again, I realized people wanted the leader skills. And if we got the leader skills, maybe that, I mean, I assume, I can't say maybe. It probably would have been better, right? But, like, the fusion category back then, remember fusion differentiated between Patara and fusion dance. So the fusion team back then uh, wouldn't have even really been that strong. I think Int Gogeta came out not long after this. So obviously for the meta at the time, like this team would have destroyed everything, even if you had to run some like less than optimal units on the team to make a full fusion team. Um, I think Shadow Dragon Saga would have been really bad back when Omega first came out on Global. I'm not entirely sure which other units came out between then and like what JP had already. Um, but yeah, the overall point is we got these units in the game to use and to have fun with as opposed to the only other alternative, which was that we just didn't get them. And it doesn't matter how much you say like, oh, but they could have just given them the leader skills. I mean, yeah, obviously for argument's sake, they could have, but they decided that they weren't going to do that. So that means we only had two options. Get them with no leader skill and have fun using them in the game on the teams that you can run them on or don't get them. And as somebody who did pull Gogeta, that's why I don't get like people replied to my tweet saying like, oh, I would have rather waited for the full unit to come out. And that just makes me think that you didn't pull them because like thinking back to playing the game during that time, I had tons of fun using Gogeta on those teams. So the idea of trading that for just not having him at all to then get him later on with his leader skill, I, just, I don't see the point of that. And one follow-up tweet that I made here is, I genuinely believe this. I guarantee if they'd put out a poll at the time asking global players, do you want the units to release with no leader skill or do you just want to wait six months and you know you just can't have them until later when global is ready for the category meta i guarantee you 100 percent that the majority vote would have been now nah, just give them to us now because we want to have fun right like gogeta's counter i remember everyone going bananas when they saw gogeta's counter and the fact that it was a 70 percent chance as well like, he was able to just solo, like, obviously back then, scouter effects weren't very common, but, like, he could solo bosses, like, especially if he got, like, an additional super attack, right? Like, he was just crazy. Um, and, yeah, like, think about it in modern, and now, obviously, the big thing I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, that this was one of the first times they'd ever done a big same-time celebration. So, a lot of people have tried making the example, a lot of people tried comparing this to the Gohan and Cell EZA, and saying that like, oh, so you don't think us getting the Easy A is bad because at least we have the units like in our box. I mean, it's not the same thing, right? Like this, a precedent has been set now that when we get dual celebrations, it's because the global meta can handle some of the content that we're getting, right? Like if they did a worldwide download celebration now where the units had no leader skill on global, it would be very hard to try and justify why they did that. But at the time, 
Like, that was the meta that we were in, right? And they didn't want to do that. Because now, leader skills have leveled out to being the same amount, right? Like, they're either 170 or they're giving a 200% leader skill. Um, and if you, again, going back, we already looked at some of these units that released later. Like, uh, would you have summoned for cooler if uh, Omega had his leader skill? Um, now, obviously, the physical type is lower, so it's kind of different. But, like... Gogeta, would you have summoned for Goku? I mean, they're on different teams, so it's a bit like neither here nor there. I guess to be more of, like appropriate, we have to think about characters that were on the same categories, right? So, like, would you have summoned for Ink Gogeta? Would you have summoned for physical Gotenks if uh, you could just run a fusion team of 150? I mean, I would still say, yes, I would have, right? Because then I could just put them on Gogeta's team. But... There are certainly arguments you could make for why they thought that the meta wasn't ready for categories. But at the end of the day, that's not part of my argument. Like, even if you think it was a really stupid decision and power creep doesn't matter and global would have been perfectly fine even with the categories, I wouldn't necessarily even argue with that that much. My point is just that they decided that no, like, the meta is not ready for these leader skills. So, as I've said multiple times, that means there were two options on the table. Either we get the units now or we don't get them. And, uh, well, obviously until later, right? So, again, I just, for me personally, I would much rather get the unit, use it on my team, have a load of fun, and then the leader skill comes out later and now I can make category teams than not get the unit and see people posting videos and screenshots of how good they are on JP. Like, I, like make it make sense. Like, And people have made some wild arguments, but I will say, like, Anyone I did discuss this with or debate this with back and forth on my tweets, like, I do like debating about Dokkan. It's obviously one of the things I enjoy doing. I make content on it. Like, I love talking about it. So, it's never personal to me, right? Unless people start to get insulting. So, if you're one of the people that I debated with, like, back and forth, obviously, you know, I don't have anything against you, even if you disagree with me. Um, it's just kind of like I say all the time when I make my tier lists. Like, let's at least keep it respectful, right? So... But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Like, I just have to say, like, maybe I am just being stubborn. I don't know. But, like, I, hopefully I've kind of highlighted the logic that I'm using here. Because I feel like this opinion is correct, right? This is one of those things that even with all these tweets and all these replies, nobody made an argument that made me go, oh, wait, yeah, actually, I'm wrong. Like... I genuinely believe that this is correct for the reasons that I've explained. And if you still disagree, let me know why you think down below. But, man, people made some weird comparisons. One of my favourite ones was, so buying a car but you get the wheels six months later is perfectly fine. And it's like, how is that a direct comparison? Like, you, you buy a car to drive it and you can't drive it if it has no wheels. Like, you summon for a unit, as far as I'm concerned, you summon for a unit in a gacha game to use them in the game. It doesn't really matter if they don't have a leader skill. Now, if they didn't have a passive, if the passive was to be released, then that would be a whole different story because the unit would essentially be unusable, right? So that wouldn't really make any sense to do. But think about summonable LRs, like yellow coin LRs. Are you going to summon for LR Golden Freezer? Because I could say, well, why summon for him? Because his leader skill is terrible. It's like, well, because I don't want him for his leader skill. I want to put him on the 200% Wicked Bloodline team. So it's just like I wanted to summon for Gogeta because I wanted to put him on my physical Vegito Blue. Like, look at all these best units in the game team. So there is what it is. Hopefully you guys listened to all the whole thing and all the arguments. Let me know what you think down below. If you still disagree, I don't really know what to say to kind of get my point across any clearer. Hopefully I did a good job. Like, I wanted to do this, like, from the heart and so it's not scripted or anything. You can probably tell. Um, but let me know what you guys think down below. I just think, even if you think them not getting the leader skills was a bit of a fumble, I just don't see this as being like, people are like, oh, this is the biggest global shaft. Like, this original tweet that I replied, when I replied saying to re released never was a shaft and was in fact a W, this was to somebody replying to a tweet about what has been the biggest shaft in Dokkan history by saying that to be released gaps every other shaft. It's like, what? I don't even think it is a shaft, let alone go that far. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.